Why Miami is spending $840 million on a massive new bridge. And it's not just about traffic. The Signature Bridge is a radical reimagining of how infrastructure can reshape a city. From transforming a congested highway corridor, to reconnecting neighborhoods that were historically divided, to creating a glowing architectural landmark meant to redefine Miami's skyline, this project aims to change how the city moves, looks, and lives. In this video, we're breaking down exactly how this bridge could change Miami forever, and why it's sparking major debate. Now, let's rewind for a second. Miami's OI 395, it's just 1.29 miles long, but oh boy does it punch above its weight. Built in 1971, this chunk of concrete has been a key player in connecting downtown Miami to Miami Beach. Think of it like the artery that pumps lifeblood, aka commuters and cargo, between two of the city's most important areas. Trucks heading to the port of Miami, tourists on their way to the beach, locals trying to dodge gridlock. Everyone uses this thing. But of course, the 70s weren't exactly known for building highways with the foresight of a population boom and modern congestion. By the late 90s, Miami's roads were feeling the heat. Traffic had ballooned way past capacity. The Midtown Interchange, where I-395 meets I-95 and SR-836, became a chaotic mess, handling over 450,000 vehicle trips a day. That's not traffic. That's a stampede. Naturally, the Florida Department of Transportation started thinking long term. Around 2010, they dropped a bombshell. They weren't just going to widen the road. They were going big, like really big. Enter the Signature Bridge. At first glance, this thing looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Designed by the same firm behind the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge's eastern span, it's not your average overpass. We're talking six massive arches, with the tallest rising 330 feet, basically as high as a 30-story skyscraper. Stretching 1,025 feet across Biscayne Boulevard, this isn't just infrastructure, it's a statement. And the design? It's not just fancy for the sake of it. The arches are meant to evoke the image of a fountain, a nod to Miami's watery soul. Picture it at night, lit up with programmable LEDs, casting reflections in Biscayne Bay. Yeah, Miami didn't want just a bridge. They wanted an icon. But here's the thing. Does a bridge really need to be iconic? Couldn't we just slap down a standard concrete span and call it a day? Well, technically, yes. But Miami wasn't just looking to move cars. They were looking to move perception. That's where it gets interesting. Sure, a standard bridge might have cost a few hundred million less. But the signature bridge? It's an investment in Miami's identity. Think Golden Gate Bridge for San Francisco or the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. That's the level they're shooting for. Will it hit that mark? That's still up for debate. But you can't deny the ambition. Speaking of ambition, let's talk about how this thing is built. The bridge's structural system is a complex cable-stayed design. Basically, the roadway is held up by a spider web of high-strength steel cables, supported by those giant arches. The arches themselves are made of 345 pre-cast concrete segments, each one weighing in at around 90 tons. That's the weight of, like, 60 cars, each. To hold all this up, engineers had to go deep. The foundation uses over 2,000 auger cast piles, some buried 134 feet into the ground. That's about as deep as a 13-story building is tall. Oh, and they used about 5,000 cubic yards of concrete and 1.7 million pounds of rebar to anchor the whole thing. You could practically build a small fortress with that. And the project doesn't stop with just the bridge. The entire I-395 corridor is getting a glow-up. The highway will expand from two lanes in each direction to three, easing some of that brutal congestion. New ramps are being added and shifted to improve traffic flow and safety. 
Ever dealt with a highway interchange where cars are weaving across three lanes to exit? Yeah, that chaos is getting a long overdue redesign. But here's something you might not expect. The project is also transforming what's under the bridge. The elevated design opens up a new 33-acre public space beneath the highway, dubbed the Underdeck, or Heritage Trail. It's a mile-long corridor that's going to be filled with walking and biking paths, water features, green space, and even an amphitheater. It's like turning an old concrete jungle into a community park. And this part, it's got some serious social significance. Back when the original II-395 was built, it effectively split the Overtown neighborhood in half, a historically black community that suffered from decades of disinvestment. Now the new design aims to reconnect Overtown with downtown Miami, hopefully sparking some long overdue revitalization and economic opportunity. All right, so this all sounds great, right? A stunning bridge, improved traffic flow, new public space, community healing. But let's talk money. This is where the story gets juicy. Originally, the entire project was budgeted at just $82 million. And now, it's ballooned to a jaw-dropping $840 million. That's 10 times the original estimate. Yikes. So where's all that cash coming from? Well, based on the initial numbers, the state is footing $556 million for I-395 and parts of I-95 and SR-836. The Miami-Dade Expressway Authority is chipping in another $186 million, mostly for the improvements on 836. And while those numbers might shift a bit with the final cost, it's still a massive public investment. Naturally, not everyone's thrilled. Construction started back in 2019, and we're not expecting to see that final ribbon cutting until late 2027. Originally, the goal was 2024, or 2025, but delays, especially due to supply chain issues, have thrown everything off course. Some materials are taking over eight months just to arrive. Meanwhile, Miami drivers are stuck in traffic purgatory. And critics? Oh, they've got thoughts. Some say the city should have prioritized mass transit instead of doubling down on roads. Why not invest in a modern rail system to actually reduce car dependency? rather than building bigger highways that just invite more traffic? It's a fair question. Because, let's be honest, cities that only build for cars often end up choking on their own congestion. And Miami isn't exactly known for its stellar public transit. But the counterpoint is this. Not everything's about moving people. Sometimes a project is about sending a message, about putting your city on the map, about saying, Hey, we're not just a vacation spot. We're a world-class urban hub. Whether or not the signature bridge lives up to that ambition remains to be seen. But no one can say Miami played it safe. And you've got to admire that, right? So next time you're in downtown Miami and you spot that massive arc of concrete and steel stretching across the skyline, remember, you're not just looking at a bridge. You're looking at the future Miami wants to build. Bold, flashy. Maybe a little extra, but definitely unforgettable. And hey, what do you think? Is the Signature Bridge a bold investment in Miami's future, or just a billion dollar flex? Would the money have been better spent on subways and rail? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I really want to know where you land on this one. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button for more deep dives into the world's wildest infrastructure projects. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss a post. All right, that's it from me. Until next time, stay curious, stay critical, and watch out for falling arches. Peace.